All right, thanks for joining me. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the top seven dividend stocks to watch for and possibly buy in 2022, at least from my personal perspective. Now, for you, there is a big disclaimer because I don't know your personal risk levels and tolerance, so you gotta make sure you make your own personal decisions or contact a financial advisor before getting into any of these kinds of things. But let's take a look at some interesting plays and some things and insights that, hey, these stocks have a good dividend uh, payout and they have some potential to possibly move here as we go into the new year. So one of the uh, ones on the list as we go here that we're gonna go alphabetical order, and I had a couple of different ones uh, as far as opinion goes, is Caterpillar. And as we take a look at Caterpillar, uh, this stock's been doing really well over time, but now it's been pulling back. So uh, as we've been pulling back, there's a bit of this creating um, lower highs, so we got a little bit of a problem here on this pullback, uh, but maybe after a little bit of digestion, this stock could continue to push into higher prices. If you go into a website called dividend.com, you can pull up um, Caterpillar and you can see it pays a yield, a annual dividend yield of 2.21% here and uh, it's pretty good uh, yield in return. The other one I had kind of as a trade uh, version of this is UPS, uh, which as you take a look at, this one's a little more choppy. So if you look at the daily, it's a little choppy. If you look at the weekly, it's been kind of trending up. My one concern with this one is, is it a little overextended? Because you have this sideways action not too long ago across 2018 and 2020, a nice breakout. Uh, then again, a sideways action, another breakout. So I wonder if it's just a little toppy. It could have a little pullback. But as far as the dividend goes, when you're watching this one, um, you know, you've got an annual yield of 1.96%. So uh, again, not too bad uh, from the dividend perspective. My next one on the list is, again, you got a trade, up be uh, trade off between Goldman Sachs and American Express. So as we look at it on the daily, you've got a lot of fluctuation. So here we've got a lot of sideways action. You can see there's just a lot of pricing uh, that's moving around. But the bottom area for at least the shorter terms around that 370 level, it's kind of around that range. Uh, the upper end is around 420. So when you're looking at it from a longer term perspective, you know, you've got this box where you're at the lower end of the box. And if you look at it more from uh, the weekly perspective, my concern here is, are we possibly rolling over a little bit? And that is the big question. Uh, when you look at the dividend um, here, you can see it's 2.08. So that one uh, is pretty nice. And if you do one that's a trade off against that, uh, you could do American Express. Also a little bit choppy on the financial side, also a little bit toppy here. Uh, so, uh, but one thing with this one is as you take a look at the trend line, uh, here looks fairly solid. And if this breaks right here, that's where your problem would be uh, from just this uh, kind of move. Looking at American Express from the dividend perspective, here's AXP. Uh, you can see it's only 1.05% versus the Goldman Sachs one is 2.08. So Goldman Sachs will pay a bit better uh, versus American Express, nearly double from a dividend perspective, but it is a little bit more uh, expensive stock as well. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's take a look at the next one I've got is Lowe's. Uh, just the home improvement and everything has just been uh, skyrocketing. So you can see even here since uh, 2012 to 2023 right now, it looks like this stock's just been doing fantastic. Uh, if you look at it on the weekly, again, it just continues to power and move. If you look at it kind of on the daily, it continues to move. My concern is if the fluff wears out, you know, will this stock pull back and kind of get back into like a, a normal level around 230? I don't know. Uh, but from a dividend perspective and from a long term investor, uh, this stock has been looking pretty good. And you got a 1.25 uh, dividend on uh, this play. If we go to another example here, let's go to Microsoft. Uh, this one also has been trending uh, kind of a nice upward pattern. You can see here recently, 20, uh, 20, 2021, you got a little bit of a dip before that. So if you just look at the monthly, you can see this trend has been fantastic. Now, a little bit getting stretched right now, could come back to those levels and then we'll see what happens. So, uh, but from the dividend side, Here's Microsoft, you got a 0.73 on the dividend. So it's not amazing, but uh, it's a fairly stable uh, company, right? Very, uh, very stable. So when we look at the next one here, and that is Procter & Gamble, um, you can see this one's kicking off fairly well. And during the coronavirus, it's been holding up well. Here was the resistance level, and then it turned into support. So since 2009, 
You can also see right here, this was kind of the trend line. I do wonder if it's getting a little extended now. We're picking up acceleration. That is a bit of a concern. So here it is on the uh, weekly chart time frame. It's starting to pull ahead with good volume. That's usually a good sign, uh, but I do wonder if it's going to get a little bit stretched and maybe a little bit toppy, uh, at least for the shorter term. Dividend wise, it's been very stable, very good. So you got a 2.21 uh, dividend and it's doing fantastic from that perspective. All right, let's go to Target, where everybody loves to shop, or some people call it Target, right? So here, if we look at it, uh, it's been moving well, right? So here was our initial uh, area, and then we accelerate it, and now we're getting a little toppy. So one of the areas of concern for me is right here, you've got this toppy area that's pulling back in, but that's where you get a little bit of that value. Uh, I'd say a nice solid support's around 220, so when you're looking at these levels, uh, that could be a good buy the dip value area right now it's still acting a bit weak and i don't know if it could act weak for a month or two i hear getting into it and then maybe it'll start taking off but it's kind of a buy the value and buy the dividend type of concept uh in this case and that's a 1.54 dividend on the percentage um next one wba this is uh walgreens so uh, this one, if you take a look at it, it's been trending lower for a little while. Uh, CVS actually is, um, there is CVS Health Corp, uh, is doing a little bit better from a chart perspective. But here, let's just compare a couple of these. Uh, if you look at CVS, right here, you got a 2.2 dividend versus uh, WBA 3.89. So you'll get a better dividend from WBA but the stock chart looks less healthy. And that's usually what happens. The higher the dividend, right? The worse the stock chart, the weaker the dividend, the better the stock chart. So here WBA, when you look at the weekly or the monthly, um, you know, it's, it's trending downward, right? It's not actually as good. In 2014, 2017, it was doing fantastic. So now you wonder, okay, is it getting into these nicer, uh, lower value buying opportunities because the dividend is nice. And if you're into the healthcare play, you're kind of piggybacking off of CVS. In fact, when you're doing this, because CVS is doing well. So if you want more like of a company that stock chart, that's doing well, but you get less dividend, CVS is the way to go. If you want a little bit of a rocky chart, um, but a higher dividend paying, you don't mind holding it for a while. Maybe things will kick off. Uh, WBA Walgreens is kind of the one to go with. Okay. Uh, Walmart's the next one. And if you just take a look at Walmart's chart, I mean, this thing just continues to, to go, right? It's so, and just look at it in the past. The stock chart's just fantastic. Um, and here is kind of our upward trend. If you look at also the weekly, you can see here's a nice solid support level around 135. So we're kind of in the low end here. You do have a little bit of a toppy pattern in this area right there at about, uh, about 153, 154 level. So that could be an issue there. Uh, but beyond that, that stock chart's been doing fantastic and well. So if we take a look at Walmart, uh, you got a 1.54 dividend. So again, slow mover, that kind of thing. Uh, you're not going to get a huge dividend, uh, but it's a consistent one. So there's a couple of those levels to watch out for. Uh, but other than that, that that's some solid uh, areas and things to watch out for. So those are a few ideas for you and concepts for you to keep an eye on in 2022. Obviously, there's tons of dividend stocks out there. Just a question of like, which ones do you like? from a chart perspective, from a payout perspective, which ones are you comfortable with holding personally, or you don't mind coming back down, like meaning they have a little pullback. Um, so take your pick, you know, grab some ideas from here and either use them or don't use them. Uh, because for everybody, the risk tolerance is a little different. If you're maybe a five-year investor versus a one-year investor versus a 20-year investor versus maybe you're swing trading these. Because if you're swing trading these, you're probably not looking at these super longer term charts as I am right here. You might be looking at them more on a daily and weekly basis. Whereas a longer term investor, you're kind of looking dividend payout, you're looking for a much longer uh, basis. So I hope this helps, gives you some insight on some of these stocks and maybe uh, another area or a section that you could research or maybe a few names that maybe gives you another idea to let, take a look a little bit deeper into the company. All right, thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of the week ahead and I will see you next time.